Um, and Ubisoft kicked things off with a wacky dance number for some reason, and really the only reason that could be is Just Dance 2017. Um, yeah, I wrote here, we're opening with a wacky dance number for some reason, at least Queen is playing, uh, Queen's, uh, it was, yeah, Don't Stop Me Now, was it? Um, yeah, uh, of course, Just Dance 2017 will come out in October this year, and the Nintendo NX next year, because if it's Just Dance, it comes out for everything. You're going to have Just Dance on your fucking toaster next year, so get ready for that. Um, Aisha Tyler is back this year once again, which is cool. Uh, hashtag Girlwood, all that good stuff. Uh, takes a moment to recognize the victims of the Orlando shooting that recently happened, which was very nice. Uh, giant Bomb, before they went into any E3 talks or anything like that, they also had a moment of silence for the Orlando victims. A uh, very sad tragedy that happened um, right before this conference, uh, right before these conferences started going on. Um, so that was nice of them. Uh, is also Ubisoft's 30th anniversary. <laughs> what a time for them to get a hostile takeover from Vivendi Universal. That kind of sucks. Uh, happy 30th birthday, Ubisoft. Your shares are now ours. Um, Ghost Recon Wildlands is talked about in greater detail. This was, this was the big teaser that ended the Ubisoft conference this year. This is the one that's really kicking things off this year. Um, you play the role of a spec ops group um, deep behind enemy lines that bust drug cartel operations in Bolivia, I think it was. Uh, the largest open world Ubisoft has ever done. That was a quote. Uh, extended gameplay trailer of a squad working together looks really cool, uh, save for the painfully scripted and fake dialogue, but it's E3, so them's the breaks, right? This game comes out on March 7th, 2017. Uh, looks like it has promise. Looks like it's mostly like a co-op game. Like I'm, I, I hope it's not basically like The Division again, where you basically have to squat up to with other people to basically get anything done in the game, and it has a more single-player vibe to it, which every Ghost Recon before this could be played single-player. That was its primary, you know, that's what, that was its primary, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Its primary way of playing it. Oh, excuse me. Um, so we'll see what happens when Ghost Recon comes out. Hopefully it won't be a technical glitchy mess. Um, hopefully it works good. Hopefully it gets well received and Ghost Recon comes back and paves the way for maybe a new Splinter some next year. Maybe Ubisoft will um, revive that next, next year. Um, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. Uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are back this year. They come out on stage to riff a little bit and uh, talk about the game a little bit. Um, this game will pick up right after the Stick of Truth left off. Um, basically, uh, the Stick of Truth, um, you were the new kid in South Park and the game ended where you basically got to be king or something like that and you start this game still wearing your crown. But everyone thinks you're a douche now because it's all about superheroes this time around and you don't have a superhero theme and you get to create one and blah blah blah. Um, uh, this game is going to come out December 6th of uh, this year. Uh, Stick of Truth is going to be free if you pre-order the Fractured Butthole. So if, say if you, uh, for some reason, didn't play Stick of Truth and this game looks good and you pre-order it, you're getting both games, which is pretty cool. Uh, new updates for The Division. There's 10 million players playing an average of 3 hours per day, um, which I find that hard to believe because I don't know, man. I, I just... I tried playing The Division, I played the beta, I just couldn't get into it. It's like World of Warcraft with assault rifles is basically what it is. And I'm just not down with the whole MMO, pay a monthly fee, uh, raid for slightly better weapons and armor than you have now, and do the same dungeons over and over. And I don't know. MMOs just aren't my thing. If you want me to get me to turn my brain off to your new game release, there's no really faster way to do it other than saying MMO or MOBA or something like that, you know. MMO and MOBA are the two big ones that I just, no. That, I'm, no, that's good. I'm good. You can hold on to that and I don't want it at all. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the first major expansion is titled Underground, like we heard about in the Microsoft conference, because Xbox players get to play it first. 
Uh, comes out June 28th on Xbox One and PC, August 4th on PS4. Uh, three free exclusive skins to celebrate Ubisoft's 30th birthday are going to be available in the division. Um, there was one for Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, and Splinter Cell, I think. Uh, also showed a teaser video for Expansion 2 titled Survival, so they're already hard at work on the second expansion slot when the first fucking expansion hasn't even come out. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, time for VR, because it's not E3 2016 without a VR spot. Uh, a game is shown called Eagle Flight. This was actually kind of interesting. Uh, Palmer Lucky himself, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, VR, Mr. Uh, Oculus Rift, uh, himself comes out to assist with the gameplay demo. It's the first ever PvP VR game. The object of the game called Capture the Prey is to battle over prey and take it back to each team's nest. The score point in an area over Paris. Um, the gameplay seems smooth and looks great. So basically what they showed is you're this eagle, uh, you're controlling them in VR from a first person view and you have to, uh, you have to take prey, um, food that the eagles would eat back to your nest and it's kind of like a uh, capture the flag sort of dynamic to it. It looked pretty cool. I mean, I gotta give it props for that, but I mean, the price is way too steep for the hardware to buy it and even try playing it, you know what I mean? But we'll see what happens with it. Uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, another VR title. As you can probably guess, this is a Star Trek game where you get to be in virtual reality and you get to, um, you know, be on the crew of the Starship Enterprise. And it had this video spot with Jerry Ryan, who played Seven of Nine, uh, uh, LeVar Burton, uh, famous for reading Rainbow and, of course, for playing Geordi LaForge on The Next Gen Generation. Um, they thought it was cool. There was this whole, like, video spot where they hammed up the how awesome, totally awesome the VR was and everything like that. Um, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, as long as it gets us one step closer to food replicators and holodecks in my lifetime, I give it a thumbs up. Um, Oh yeah, and Carl Urban was in the video spot, and the freaky thing about Carl Urban, like, I thought this guy was Jonathan Frakes. This guy looks just like Commander Riker. Just like him. Like, I just assumed it was Jonathan Frakes when I saw him, but it was Carl Urban. I'm like, whoa. Holy shit, dude. You'd be like a stunt double for him. Um, yeah, they were with the senior creator director of Red Storm Entertainment who's working on this game, so they tested it out and showed it off. Um, didn't give an exact release date, but hopefully it's not too far off. Uh, For Honor. This was the big surprise for me out of Ubisoft last year. It's showing off more this year. This game looks sweet. Uh, a trailer is shown where the game world is a ravaged war-torn land where soldiers fight over whatever scraps are left to survive. Uh, in the video it showed two soldiers fighting over a, a small, um, a little uh, pond, a little bit of water in the land. Um, like, who's going to control it, who's going to take it, and they're literally fighting to the death over this small, this small area of water um, about who's going to get it. And the two soldiers fight, then it turns into three soldiers, which you lose. There's going to be three types of soldiers in this game. There's going to be uh, a viking, there's going to be a samurai, and there's going to be a good old-fashioned medieval knight. So you'll get to fight uh, using those three classes. Um, yeah, seems, seems you can choose between those three. Comes out February 14th, 2017. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, too, if you have that girl gamer in your life, if you want to get them something that satisfies their medieval desires, um, pick up For Honor. It'll be available on Valentine's Day next year. Ubisoft has you covered. Um, uh, then they showed a game called Grow Up. Uh, help a little robot friend explore the world. It was a cute little indie title that comes out in August. An 80s themed Trials game called Trials of the Blood Dragon, uh, which was released immediately after it was shown at E3. Um, it was just like a, a balls crazy, off the wall, kind of what they did for Far Cry 3 when they released Blood Dragon for that. They kind of gave it the Trials treatment, so that's a, another expansion for, uh, uh, for Trials. Um, if you want to try that out. Um, the only Assassin's Creed mention, because God forbid we go through one Ubisoft conference without mentioning Assassin's fucking Creed. It's like getting through an E3 without Call of Duty. It's not going to happen. Didn't happen here, but 
kind of a weird twist. We talked about the Assassin's Creed movie. Oh, boy. Because what I want to hear besides uh, of a new Assassin's Creed game at a games conference is a movie. Frank Marshall comes out to talk about why he chose to produce a movie like this. I guess he liked the plot of it or whatever. I didn't really pay attention because I was half asleep. Because I'm here to watch games. I don't care about an Assassin's Creed movie. You shouldn't either. Uh, but if you do, for some reason, it comes out December 21st. Moving on. Watch underscore dogs part two. Uh, this was probably the worst kept secret out of any E3 reveal this year. Um... People knew as far back as, like, when Ubisoft released their latest financial report or something, it had fucking Watch Dogs 2 on it. Um, this game is going to have a whole new setting. It's going to be set in San Francisco. It's going to be have a whole new protagonist, since, you know, hardly anybody liked Aiden Pierce from the first game. I didn't mind him, but yet again, I didn't play Watch underscore Dogs 1 that much. Um... But Watch Underscore Dogs Part 2 is going to have a new protagonist named Marcus, and he's part of this little script kitty hacker group or whatever. It basically looks like a more fleshed out version of the first game. Um, so we have that to look forward to. So hopefully it's not, it doesn't have the same problems and it was a glitchy mess like the first one was uh, on release, where those famous videos were shown around where you're falling through the level and you're stopping trains dead on and you're causing like cars to pile up and fly through the air for seemingly no reason, like those famous videos. Um, yeah, he plays a hacker group called DeadSec that is trying to take control back from the establishment. Fight the power. Uh, PS4 will get DLC content 30 days before other platforms. And yeah, Watch Dogs 2. Um, Did they say a release date for Watch Dogs 2? I believe they did. I believe it's coming out this year. I don't have the exact release date written here, though. Strange. I thought they did, but whatever. Uh, Yves Gamot, our favorite little Frenchman CEO, comes back to introduce Steep. Because, um, of course, he has to. they have to introduce this new original bombshell title at the end of every one of their conferences. This one's called Steep. Um, this is a open-world winter sports extreme sports type game like they showed uh guys like uh skiing and jumping off of cliffs at insane degrees and stuff like that um it looks kind of interesting but they really didn't show a lot of information about it um but it's named steep s-t-e-e-p if you want to check out more about it um that's pretty much all i got out of the reveal they did uh for that but whatever Steep is, it comes out December 2016. Um, I wrote here, that was, that was pretty much uh, Ubisoft's um, conference. I put here at the very end of my notes, I guess Beyond Good and Evil 2 is dead and buried. Absolutely, positively no mention of it. Um, after I made these notes, I don't know if it was Yves Gamow who came out uh, and basically said, no, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still being worked on. But the guy who's working on Beyond Good and Evil 2 right now is working on, um, what game was it? He was already working on another game I just mentioned. Um, I totally forget what it was. But he, he's currently working on Beyond Good and Evil 2 when he's not working on another game that's coming out that has more of a priority for Ubisoft right now. Um, so... It should be in development. It's not vaporware. They promise. They, you know, they cross their heart and hope to die, I guess. Um, it's still being made, so we'll see. Um, I guess Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to be the new Last Guardian at this rate. Um, and I also put here, don't forget to go to Ubisoft Club and get your free PC game for every month for the rest of 2016. To celebrate their 30th anniversary, uh, for some reason they're releasing, um, to do to celebrate that, they're releasing a new PC game for free every month on their store. So if you're part of um, the Ubisoft Club, um, you know your your Ubisoft account, uh, you can go there. You can create a free account there, and every month for the rest of the year they're making 
they're releasing a uh, PC game for free. This month, uh, grab it before the first, which is this Friday. You'll get Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time for free, which is an excellent, it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, so make sure you do that. That's pretty much it for Ubisoft. Um, not particularly excited about anything except for Honor, but I just can't bring myself to buy a Ubisoft game on release. Um, I did it with Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege didn't turn out too bad, but I'm I'm sure it's been vastly improved since it first came out. So, Four Honor is kind of on my list. If I get a decent deal for that, I'll probably snag that up. But otherwise, like, are people really going to go out and buy Watch Dogs 2 on release day after what happened with the first one? Like, really? I wouldn't. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So then we move on to Sony. And props to Sony because they probably had, as usual, the strongest conference of this year's E3. There, I said it. Sony put on a killer show this year. You, you gotta give them props, man. They just showed game after game after game after game after game after game. No talking, no bullshit, no fucking esports fucking pep talk for fucking 20 minutes. They came out, they came to a games convention, and you know what they did? They showed video games. So good job on you, Sony. Um, so Sony kicked things off with an orchestra playing God of War music for some reason, and then they showed that reason to be, hey, there's going to be a new God of War for the PS4. Um, Bearded Kratos confirmed. Uh, looks more like Dark Souls than God of War, and there's also like an Uncharted vibe to it without the guns. Like it just has that kind of weird over the shoulder camera it showed most of the time in this uh, video. Um, apparently, Kratos has a son, and he's teaching his son the way of hunting in the winter, um, and it's just named God of War. Um, so apparently, it's a reboot, no release date. Um, looks kind of interesting, though. Um, it's like they're trying to take God of War in a totally different direction. I don't know if they're going to hand the torch off to this, the son of Kratos and he's going to be the new God of War or something like that. I have no idea. Um, the trailer really didn't show much, um, but, you know, uh, it's nice to see a new God of War. Um, I'm surprised it took them this long to announce it and this long to show something off pertaining to God of War. Um, since the best thing we currently have on the PS4 is God of War 3 Remastered. Um, but yeah, new God of War is coming out. Um, Sean Layden comes out once again, uh, pays tribute to the, the horrible uh, Orlando tragedy that happened and, you know, says kind words to the victims of that. Um, that was a common theme in this conference, which was really, really cool. Um, glad people recognized it and took time out to um, address it, because it was horrible. Um, terrible, senseless violence in our country. It's it's really getting out of hand. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, a video shown for Days Gone. Um, okay, there's apparently this game called Days Gone. They would show at the end of the conference, the tail end of the conference, that uh, it's like another, yet another zombie survival horror uh, game. Kind of, It's kind of like a mix between State of Decay and Dead Rising, but it's like... If World War Z was a video game, this is probably what it would look like. It looked kind of generic, though. So I don't know if it was a really early showing of the game or what, but eh. Um, video is shown for The Last Guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a hard release date for The Last Guardian, October 25th, 2016. The Last Guardian is going to hit store shelves, and it is going to end its reign of vaporware. Um, that's basically been for the longest time. I never thought I'd see the day, but we're getting Last Guardian this year. Um, then uh, they showed uh, a fleshed out um, version of Horizon Zero Dawn, aka the game with the lady with the bow and arrow where you could ride a dino robot or a robot dinosaur. Yeah, I got this mixed around. Uh, game looks fantastic. That's the good news. The bad news is it this also got pushed to February 14th, 2017. 
So now, if you're going to buy For Honor for that special person in your life for Valentine's Day, now the other person can buy Horizon Zero Dawn and they can swap. Aw, isn't that sweet? Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, that's coming out in February next year. The game looks fantastic, just like it did last year, so props to uh, the developers there for that game. Uh, speaking of developers, um, Detroit Become Human gameplay trailer is shown. Uh, David Cage's new project he's working on here. Um, every action has a consequence for your android protagonists. Maybe more than one, I'm not sure. Um, but it showed like a, a, like a real story-based dramatic type story, um, like a type trailer, I mean, where you have different choices you can make at different points, and it seems that it uses that gimmick to the fullest where it, it honestly does change the story um, dynamically more than any other game that's given the illusion of choice before. So, kind of looks interesting. We'll see what happens with Detroit when it comes out. Um, and this was my personal eyebrow-raising moment of the entire com uh, the entirety of E3. Resident Evil 7. What is up with that? Uh, and for some reason, Resident Evil 7 has the subtitle of Biohazard now, which, fun fact, if you don't know much about Resident Evil, Biohazard is what it actually used to be named in Japan before it came over here. Um, so that, that's kind of weird. Um, it's a first-person horror exploration game. This game looked nothing, and I mean nothing like Resident Evil. It looked more like PT than anything. Uh, the famous demo that was going to be uh, Silent Hills, but unfortunately got canceled because Konami went absolutely batshit crazy and uh, is making nothing but pachinko machines now or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's first person. Uh, no zombies, no tank controls, you know, no master of unlocking, no Jill sandwiches. There, there was none of that here. Um, Though so Capcom has hinted in post-conference interviews uh, with some of the development team on Resident Evil 7 that trust you can trust them. There's going to be familiarity for people with for fans of this series that are going to be shown in Resident Evil 7. They didn't go into specifics, um, but they said it's going to be a Resident Evil game. Trust us. You know we know what we're doing. So hopefully, um, I hope they don't stray too much from the original formula that a lot of people have become accustomed to. Um, but it looked interesting all the same. I'm like, okay, that looked absolutely nothing like a Resident Evil game. Hmm. I wonder what's going on there. It caught my attention. I mean, so they must have did something right. Um, will be completely playable on PlayStation VR. Um, yeah. And speaking of PlayStation VR, um, Sean Layden introduced PlayStation VR right after that to the tune of $400, and it comes out on October 13th. I can't really see many people buying PlayStation VR right now. I feel it's a platform that has to prove itself, because I don't think VR as a whole has really proven itself that much. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. So if you got an extra 400 bones and you're a diehard Sony fan, hey, go buy that PlayStation VR. <laughs> you know, for probably like the three or four games that are going to support it out of the box, but I digress. Um, then there's a VR spot. Uh, more games shown that are going to have VR support, including Battlefront X-Wing Mission, Batman Arkham VR. There's going to be a version of Batman Arkham whatever that's going to have VR support. Uh, Final Fantasy XV is going to even have VR support. They showed this really weird uh, gameplay trailer where it was kind of akin to the boss fight we saw in the Microsoft conference, but stuff happens and then all of a sudden all the protagonists in Final Fantasy 15 have little PlayStation VR visors on and I don't know what's going on but apparently Final Fantasy 15 is going to be one of those titles that supports it. Um, then Call of Duty Infinite Warfare campaign footage was shown. Meh. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, if you've watched any of the videos on my channel you know how I feel about Call of Duty and really this isn't any different. Yeah, you're in space. Yeah, you're kind of fighting in zero gravity, but the netcode's going to suck dick. And because the netcode has been getting worse and worse and worse with every iteration of Call of Duty, so what fucking difference does it make? You know, I, 
I'm an old-fashioned guy, and when I play shooters, I want my bullets to go where my crosshair is on the screen. I don't want to run around a fucking corner and die two seconds later because the game actually thought I was still out in the open or whatever, but I'm just, I, I'm not, I'm done with Call of Duty. Maybe I'll go back in the, the far future and play like the single player versions of Call of Duty, but as a multiplayer, I am a Battlefield, Titanfall, Overwatch, pretty much anything but Call of Duty guy. That's what I am now. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then they had to show off, of course, Modern Warfare Remastered. That's going to come with Infinite Warfare. And don't forget now, the only way you're going to play Modern Warfare Remastered is if you buy their shit pile this year, uh, their yearly shit that they take on the floor called Infinite Warfare. I mean... Here's the only thing I'm going to say about Call of Duty, because I'm not going to go into detail about it, because I think I've talked my fucking head off about it enough. How much confidence do they really have in their new game called Infinite Warfare if they're hiding a remaster of Modern Warfare behind it, where the only way you're going to get it is if you buy specific tiers of Infinite Warfare, like specific versions of it? Like, oh, well, you can get your remaster of Modern Warfare, you know the thing you guys have been asking for for years and years and years? We made it, but there's a catch. You gotta buy our latest shitty Call of Duty so we can inflate our sales numbers and keep this leaking ship afloat for some goddamn reason. I don't know why. Just let it die. God, Call of Duty's been so beaten into the ground. That, that fucking dog barely has a breath left in its body. Just fucking euthanize it, for Christ's sake. It's done. Nobody, nobody cares about Call of Duty anymore. I, I don't care what sales numbers you have. I, I, don't, I don't care. If you don't make the netcode efficient enough for a multiplayer shooter, it's not worth playing. That's just my opinion. That, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, I, I can't imagine anyone buying this game when you have Battlefield 1, when you have Overwatch, when you have Titanfall 2, when you have Doom, um, when you have Star Wars Battlefront. Like, people are still playing fucking Battlefield 4. Battlefield Hardline is going to be better than this game. But come on. But there's your yearly Call of Duty. You know, what are they going to do What are they gonna do next year? Are they going to make their Call of Duty even fucking worse and hide a remaster of Modern Warfare 2 behind it? We're, we're just, we're, we're going to make a new Call of Duty and then we're going to fucking hide the one from like 10 years ago behind it so we can boost sales. Like, that's how you know this game is failing, but whatever. No one's going to listen to me. People are still going to buy it, but I just have to vent because this is fucking ludicrous already. Um, announcement of the original Crash Trilogy remastered for the PS4. This was a bit of a surprise. When Sean Layden came out back out on stage when he was talking about Call of Duty, after the Call of Duty segment, he came out and the stage turned into like this Crash level setting. And when Sean was walking out, he had the shadow of Crash following him. Um... And it looks like they worked out a deal with Activision, who owns the Crash Bandicoot license now, and they're remastering uh, Crash 1, Crash 2, and Crash Warped, which was the original trilogy on PS1. They're going to make a full remaster for the PS4. He didn't exactly say when, but after the conference, the best I could find on this was sometime next year. So it's not immediate, but it's coming. It's better than nothing. Uh, right, Kenji Anafune? It's better than nothing, right? Uh, oh, and they showed Crash is also going to be in the new Skylanders game, I guess. There was another weird segue into that, where Crash was in a Skylanders game. I don't know. Um, Lego Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Video Spot. Everyone knew this was coming. Nobody really cares. Next, uh, Andrew House comes out to introduce Hideo Kojima. He is back. Um, he is in... Uh, the pocket of Sony now that Konami decided to go insane. Um, and now uh, Kojima basically has free creative reign to do whatever he wants, and Sony's funding it. Um, and what was shown was probably the most, the most non-sequential, non weird, bizarre, odd, 
intriguing, pretentious video game trailer I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, Norman, Reed, Norman Reedus is in it. He's naked on a beach. There's a baby next to him. He picks up the baby. The baby disappears and turns into this black sludge. Um, then he looks up. Then there's a big pile of dead fish in front of him and stuff. And we get to turn around and we get to see uh, Nor Norman Reedus' butt in CGI as the trailer fades up and reveals the title Death Stranding. And I'm like, ah... That's what you do when you tell Hideo Kojima to, hey, you have the creative freedom, you have the creative freedom to make whatever you want, so go nuts. Well, <laughs> it was nuts, all right. Um, Death Stranding. We have no idea what this game is. We don't know when it's coming out. Uh, we don't hardly know anything about it except for that mindfuck, like 45 second reveal or teaser or whatever the hell you want to call it. So. Kojima's making a new game. I mean, he really hasn't made a bad game yet, so whatever he comes up with, it's going to sure as hell be interesting. You could say that much. Um, a new Spider-Man game from Insomniac was teased. It has no official name. We just know it's a Spider-Man because Spider-Man is slinging around town once again in the video they showed, and it's definitely getting made by Insomniac Games, so we'll see what happens with that. Finally, maybe finally we'll get a good Spider-Man game. We haven't had one of those in about a decade, so uh, more news on that is coming. Like I said, no official name, no release date, but Spidey's back. We know that much. Um, Days Gone, um, I, 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 showed, I talked about this before to end the conference. Really weird thing to end the conference on. Uh, Days Gone gameplay trailer to close things out. It's a third-person zombie apocalypse game. Like I said, it, it looked like uh, if someone took World War Z and turned it into a third-person shooter, but it looks uninspired next to all the other zombie games that are coming out. So, I mean, this game really has to pull off something unique to stand out from the crowd. And that's pretty much Sony. Um, kind of a weird conference. Um, no mention of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. No update on Shenmue 3, even though they wasted a slot on it last year to introduce the Kickstarter that's going to eventually make the game. Um, I'm sure Shenmue 3 is another year or two off anyway, so I'm not that worried about it, but whatever. Um, that's pretty much it, yeah. Not a lot of release dates, a lot of interesting ideas, but nothing solid unless you count The Last Guardian, which is finally coming out, and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's going to be released next year, as well as the Crash remasters that are going to be released next year. So on the Nintendo. Nintendo. Nintendo didn't have much to show, and yet somehow, some way, they showed what was probably the best thing at E3. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh my god, does this game look like sex. It, it looks amazing. I mean, it looks amazing. I, I, I can't really say anything else, man. If, if the Wii U's going to go out, it's definitely going out in style with this game. Um, this, their Nintendo Direct for E3 starts out with Reggie, once again, recognizes uh, the victims of the Orlando shooting, which was touching. He, he had a moment of silence where the screen went black and everything. It was very, very nice. Um, moves on to show off the new Legend of Zelda title. Video shows various shots of the beautiful overworld. This game kind of has a cartoony look to it. Like, it's not Ocarina of Time, but it's not Wind Waker either. It's somewhere in the middle. It looks very polished. It looks gorgeous. I can't really say a bad thing about this game. I can't wait to uh, download it to my Wii U and give it a whirl. So, very, very exciting. Um, you know, the, the gameplay that was shown, it cuts the link running through the world. Uh, it looks legit amazing, I wrote here. Um, there was an announcement of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon for the 3DS that comes out November 18th. Um, it takes place on a set of tropical islands because there was a live gameplay demonstration when they went to the treehouse. Um, and after that, they showed Zelda live gameplay footage, that, like Pokemon, like who cares? Show more of that Zelda game, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, the world looks enormous. They showed a picture of 
the, the part of the world map that was available to play in E3 and then they went to the actual world map and they zoomed out and they showed I was only a very, very small portion of it. Um, this basically looks like the Elder Scrolls version of Zelda. Um, Link can scale mountains, glide through the air, uh, chop down trees. Uh, Wolf Link appears to be making a comeback. If you remember Wolf Link from, I believe it was Twilight Princess. Uh, you can gather loot in this game. You can hunt, I think you can hunt animals and cook food. Um, just so many things, man. Like this is, the way they're hyping this game up, it's gonna be the Zelda game of all Zelda games. Uh, uh, there will also be different weather effects the higher you go up in elevation. So if you go up high on a mountain, it's obviously going to be cold than if you're at like uh, level ground. Um, the game experience will be exactly the same on the NX, no gimmicks. It's not going to have a graphical facelift according to Nintendo at this conference. Uh, both consoles are going to get the exact same treatment. Uh, Miyamoto, Shigeru Miyamoto even went on record saying he wanted to expand the scope of the original Legend of Zelda rather than make just another sequel, which is awesome, which is why Miyamoto is one of the most heralded game designers or game producers in the entire industry. Um, this guy, because he gets it, um, he wanted to take his original vision of the original Legend of Zelda that was released on the NES and he wanted to expand it to what was popular now um, like 30 years later on these consoles we have now. Um, and, you know, we've got to give them props for it. This game looks awesome. It looks amazing. Um, I think it got Game of the Year for E3 from several different outlets, and you know what? I'm right there with them. Nintendo only had, really had one game to show, and it was the best game of E3. Props. Respect. You know what I mean? It was it, it was that good. Like I, I'm not I'm not debating that choice at all. It looks like an amazing game, um, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Uh, on November fourth, a new Mario Party for the 3DS called Star Rush is going to be released. Uh, another wave of Amiibos, as well as as well as coming out. Uh, I think either. This year, late, late this year or early next year, uh, including Wario, Waluigi, Diddy Kong, and more. Um, speaking of Amiibos, Zelda Breath of the Wild, of course, is going to have its own, uh, its own line of Amiibos. Um, that's going to have its own set. And it, according to what they said, it's going to be released with the game in 2017. Um, and also, one more thing as far as Nintendo goes, uh, they did a, someone did a post E3 interview with Reggie Fiume, and he basically said, we're about the content, not the specs. Um, as far as the new Nintendo NX goes, that's going to be released next year. So that's kind of what they said about the Wii and the Wii U. Um, so basically, Reggie himself came out and basically admitted that this system is not a technical powerhouse. If you want to argue about teraflops and gigahertz and all that stuff, that's Microsoft's and Sony's battle. Nintendo is just over here doing its own thing, so it's basically regulated itself officially to a secondary console position, which, whatever. Nintendo's, gonna, Nintendo's pretty set in their ways, and they're going to do whatever they want, so. I guess it's fine. That's basically Nintendo. Uh, they came with Zelda, and Zelda was so good, that's basically all they had to show. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Game, game of E3, if you ask me. Um, and then we finally move on to the PC Gamers PC Gaming Show. And I was really regretting this, because the PC Gaming Conference of last year, the first of which they held, uh, that EA, uh, the EA uh, AMD sponsored, and AMD sponsored this one too, but the, the show last year was the biggest, grossest, smelliest tire fire I think I've ever seen. Um, so I was dreading watching this, but for the sake of being a completionist with my notes here, I had to, and it actually didn't turn out that bad. So I'm gonna run through these announcements really, really quick because it's, it's getting a bit late and my voice is straining here. So uh, Tom Mark starts the show off with helping uh, the victims of Orlando by donating blood to them. He basically said that these victims need blood. Here's where you can donate blood to the victims of Orlando. A prevalent theme throughout uh, today's conferences. 
uh, Steam speedrun contest where one lucky person gets to put as many games into their Steam card as possible in three minutes. It was this lucky girl who came out and uh, basically sped through the Steam store faster than I ever could during one of their sales back in the day. Bought a whole bunch of games that weren't even out yet. Bought a few games that were because I guess she live streams like, like survival horror games and stuff like that. So it was a neat idea. Good for her. Um, day 9 who was the host last year of the show is back this year. Um, there's a montage of different PC games that are shown. Uh, Relic comes out first with a real life Space Marine, which looked pretty cool, and announces Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 3. There's a gameplay trailer for that, no release date. A uh, new game from the makers of Don't Starve called Oxygen Not Included, uh, which comes out late 2016. A uh, quick gameplay clip shows a 2D game where you're performing experiments in a lab. It looks like kind of quirky, kind of fun, kind of fun. So we'll see what happens with that game. Uh, the creators of Ark Survival Evolved come out and show off a new area and mods for the game coming later this year. Um, can be any animal in the game and live through their life cycle. Um, like it showed someone being a part of a wolf pack, like an actual wolf, and being a wolf from first person. You're, they claim you could do that with other animals as well. Um, I played the game preview of Ark Survival Evolved on the Xbox One, I think, late last year, and I was just not impressed by it. Uh, granted, it was probably a very, very early build of the game, um, but I just didn't, just didn't do anything for me. So maybe I'll give another crack at it later on, but as far as I'm concerned, the game's trash, at least on consoles. It, it was really made just for the PC, and they really should focus on perfecting it on the PC and then worrying about how to optimize it later on for consoles, but that's just my opinion. Um, a humorous game called Giant Cop is shown next. This is probably the best thing, in my opinion, shown at the PC gaming conference. Uh, you play as, you guessed it, a giant cop overlooking a city and solving crimes by investigating people and plucking them out of crowds and such. Funny dialogue, it comes out this fall. I don't know if this is just a VR game, I hope not, because this is something I'd actually be interested in playing. Um, you play this giant hovering cop, and he really has no body, but he kind of has uh, his eyes and his mouth, and his hands are flailing, and I guess you solve problems around the city that you're in by zooming in on people, and you can overlook them and like pluck them out of a crowd or just toss them out, or mess with them a little bit and stuff like that to solve whatever objective you need to do. So it looked really, really cool. Um, kind of going to keep, uh, and, you know, make a mental note in the back of my head to keep a track of that game because that looked neat. Um, Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord is going to be a thing. Uh, new Siege gameplay is shown. Destruction and Siege weapons are more of a focus in this game. Didn't have a release date. Uh, another game shown called The Surge from the makers of Lords of the Fallen. Uh, looks like a futuristic Dark Souls type game. So they made Lords of the Fallen, which was basically not Dark Souls, and they're going to make a futuristic version of Dark Souls, which is totally not Dark Souls. So you have that to look forward to. Uh, Cliffy B. Cliff Blazinski comes out to talk about his newest game, a shooter called Lawbreakers. This was kind of interesting. Uh, movement looks great and a mix between fast movement and zero gravity. Uh, with different styles of combat. Public alpha signups uh, were the weekend after this was announced. This was kind of, it was kind of like a mix between Unreal Tournament and Overwatch, if that makes any sense. It wasn't as fast as Unreal Tournament, but it had much more of a vibe of the classic deathmatch shooters from the 90s, like Quake, Unreal Tournament, Half-Life Deathmatch, like stuff like that. Uh, looked kind of interesting. Um, he basically said it's only going to be PC for now, which is kind of bleh, but whatever. Um, we'll see what happens when it comes out. Hopefully it gets popular. Hopefully it does well for itself because we need a throwback to um, classic deathmatch games. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's see. Yahoo Esports clip. Moving on. Uh, Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD, comes out to show off more video cards, comes out to talk about something called Polaris, which aims at offering enthusiast-level graphics for mid-range prices, which is always a great thing. Uh, gameplay clip of Doom shows this off. It cuts back to Lisa, who then shows off AMD's three newest video cards. They literally had someone come out on stage to show a VR backpack powered by Alienware. Yeah, this actually happened. 
Um, someone came out with a VR headset on, I do believe, I'm almost positive, and they had a backpack with an Alienware logo on it, and their idea of it was you get to carry like a laptop or a computing system with VR. There's like VR hardware in this backpack and you can just carry everything with you and you don't have to take everything off if you want to play VR games or something like that. I don't know. It was kind of strange. Uh, gameplay clip of Serious Sam in VR. Speaking of VR, uh, it's a new game called The Last Hope. It's coming later this summer, so it's cool to see Serious Sam coming back. Um, then uh, Lisa showed off a brief behind-the-scenes video of the new processor 8-core line codenamed Zen. It's going to be their new um, CPU or APU. Um, so we'll see what happens when that comes out. Uh, Vampire from the makers of Life is Strange is next. Pre-alpha gameplay demo shows a badass sword-wielding wielding vampire wearing a trench coat. Um, that looks like a pretty cool game. Tripwire Interactive is back with Killing Floor 2. They talked about Killing Floor 2 last year. Uh, talks new content for the game. Gameplay video shows off Bullseye, which is the newest content pack which expands player versus Zed battles. Uh, available now. Game leaves early access this fall, so that's come a long way. Killing Floor Incursion is a new VR game, because of course every game has to have a, a VR counterpart to it somehow. Uh, Super Hot will be coming to the Oculus. That's going to have VR support. World premiere of a new RPG from Paradox and Obsidian Entertainment called Tyranny. It's an isometric, isometric RPG which, acts, which uh, gives out the statement that sometimes evil wins. Um, pretty cool. Kind of has like a little bit of a Baldur's Gate vibe to it. Which, if you've never played Baldur's Gate on the PC and you love RPGs, like, oh my god, go play Baldur's Gate right now. Um, so that looked interesting. Uh, next, a uh, futuristic first-person horror game by the makers of Layer of Fear called Observer. Asked the question, what would you do if your fears got hacked? So it's like a survival horror game uh, sort of thing, first-person, kind of like a Soma vibe I got from it. Um, it. And also, if I'm not mentioning a release date for any of these, it's because they didn't show one. Um, if there is one, then... You know, it, it wasn't shown in this conference in particular. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Um, where did I leave off? New RTS game with MOBA elements called Drop Zone. Uh, control three different pilots with different abilities. That's going to be a thing. Um, Arma 3 has an expansion called Apex. Um, that was introduced by Bohemia Interactive that was there. Um, if the camera pedestal is shaking right now, it's because my cat is trying to chew one of the tripod legs or something. Yo! Stop. Um, Turing Test, a puzzle game set in on Europa. A sci-fi story revolves around robots. Turing Test, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. That was there. Overland is a game where you travel cross-country through a post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland. Gameplay trailer shows a zoomed-in isometric perspective. The next level of early access was on June 13th, so that already happened. If that's something that interests you, go check out Overland. Um, what else? A uh, new space sim called Dual Universe. Uh, gameplay shows a first-person perspective where all ships and items are built in-game, which that could be an interesting thing. Um, a video celebrating the legacy of the mouse and the keyboard. That was shown. They showed a little history about that. Uh, Dan Ayub from Microsoft comes back to talk more Halo 2 and show more gameplay because that's going to have a PC port. Uh, from the makers of Insurgency, a game called Day of Infamy. Wasn't clear what it was. It looks like it's going to be another World War II shooter, but I wasn't quite sure because they didn't show like actual gameplay of it. Um, from the makers of Chivalry, a similar game that expands on Chivalry's elements. This one's called Mirage Arcane Warfare. Uh, that's coming out this fall. So you have Chivalry Medieval Warfare, and now you're going to have Mirage Arcane Warfare. So it's basically Chivalry with Wizards. Um, Mages of Mistralia. An overhead game where you play as a mage and craft your own spells that look kind of interesting. A uh, new game mode for Warframe called Lunaro. 
a new sports mode similar to soccer is, is revealed. Another video shows how to download a free weapon skin for Warframe. So if you play Warframe and you watch this conference, you got a free weapon skin. Um, Deus Ex Mankind Divided gameplay trailer shows the first level of the game. That also shows off the new abilities and augmentations that are going to be in that game. Uh, War Inspector comes out to close the conference. Um, good old War Inspector came out to talk some history. How he was a diehard PC guy from 1989 to 2004. Uh, his team had more control over the first Deus Ex, but had different marching orders to abide by when Deus Ex Invisible War and Thief Deadly Shadows were a thing. It definitely shows because those games weren't as good as the games prior to it. Uh, console versions first and the PC versions were an afterthought. That was basically the MO that uh, game developers had to abide by um, in the early 2000s when the Xbox and the PS2 got more popular and PC kind of got thrown by the wayside and by the time the Xbox 360 came out um, the industry basically went full tilt where console games were much, much more popular than the PC, than PC games, and PC games were basically an afterthought by that point. I, from what I'm seeing, like from the outside looking in, we're seeing a slow push back to PC in a way, a very slow push. Um, hopefully I like to see that, because you know what, it keeps everyone on their toes and we get the best games out of the, all the developers out there. So. Um, so yeah, good to see War Inspector doing well. Um, He's still working on System Shock 3 and Underworld Ascendant. Uh, if Underworld Ascendant doesn't really mean anything, maybe the words, maybe the words Ultima Underworld will mean something, but they can't use Ultima because I think EA still owns the trademark to Ultima. So, you know, War Inspector, it, it's nice to, for him to come out and lay down some knowledge on these new kids. You know what I mean? Um, he believes PC gaming is making a comeback as well. Uh, it's making a resurgence because of social media, all of the new free development tools out there like Unreal Engine and Unity that people can get their hands on, like all these great indie games that have been coming out. Um, and speaking of uh, games being an afterthought, it was also out of his hands for Epic Mickey to be a Wii exclusive. He kind of understood why it was at the time, but he didn't understand. Um, just goes to show that if publishers really want something done, and they want something released at a certain fiscal quarter that they can put into their fucking records or whatever it is they do, that development studios aren't really to blame all the time. Um, they're the ones who have to rush the game out. They're the ones who have to contain, you know, contain a disaster zone when making these games, so to speak. So you can't really put all the blame on the developers. It's mostly the publishers, I believe, because they're the ones that rush the fucking things out the door. It's not always the developers. Um, let's see what else. Uh, did I miss anything War Inspector said? Um, he touted about the success of indie games as PC gaming making a, a small resurgence back uh, to being more popular like it was in the late 90s. Uh, he quoted games like Minecraft, Undertale, Rocket League, and more um, as prime examples of why PC gaming is making a shift back thanks to the uh, indie developers. Um, he still believes it to be the one true diplomatic platform, which is great. I also agree, like I said before, uh, back in uh, my last E3 video, uh, when I was talking about Microsoft's conference, if I had it my way, if you could buy all your games on PC from different storefronts on the same PC and they all ran in harmony, it would be wonderful. Um, but companies have to be greedy and release proprietary bullshit, so we're not going to see that ever. Uh, there are a few announcements made during the post-show. There was a PC gaming post-show, I guess, for some reason. Uh, there's a new Hitman episode out, uh, two bonus missions to close out the current season, a new elusive target is announced, the thing with elusive targets in the new Hitman game is that they're announced once, and if you die while trying to kill them, it's over. You only get one shot. If you die on the first shot, that's it. One strike and you're out, and they run off, and you never get another chance to assassinate them. Which I think is pretty neat. 
Planet Coaster gameplay video. Release date is later this year. If you're into those coaster, roller coaster, tycoon type games, it's like that. Elite Dangerous video spot. Uh, update 2.1 introduces engineers into the game. So yay, Elite Dangerous people, you're getting engineers. Battletech is still coming along since reaching its goal on Kickstarter, the official Battletech game using the official Battletech license. It's still on the way, it's looking good, um, so just be a little more patient for that, and that'll come out soon. Ne Necro... Necropolis, a roguelike action game, has permadeath, has four-player co-op, looks to be a third-person action game, it comes out on Steam on July 12th, consoles later this summer, that looked kind of interesting. Uh, DayZ gets a mention, um, new updates, better graphical effects, new inventory skins, server queue, etc. I'm, I'm sorry if I have the paper up to my face so much because I don't have all of these memorized because it's the PC Gaming Conference. I'm not personally interested or invested in the PC Gaming Conference, but I just had to put the notes in here because there were a few good things that were announced, but I forget most of it, so I do apologize if I'm, if I'm blocking my face too much while I'm trying to share the E3 news here. Uh, one more thing from the PC Gaming Conference is all I have. It's this game called Badia, B-A-D-I-Y-A. -A. Uh, a game from Saudi Arabia that is a third-person proced procedurally generated survival RPG. Uh, it will start out as a single player, but co-op and multiplayer will be added later, and I just included that because it's very, very cool. Um, to see a game from Saudi Arabia, like developers are out in Saudi Arabia making computer games. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, that's it for the PC gaming conference. Uh, at least it was better than last year. It wasn't cringeworthy. Uh, they actually announced more interesting stuff this year, so... Hey, good for them. And that, of course brings me to the last part of my E3 coverage for 2016, and that's basically the rest miscellaneous stuff that really doesn't fall into the category of any of the specific conferences I just went over. Um, we can start this final section off with some good news and bad news regarding Sniper Elite 4, uh, which is the good news. Sniper Elite 4 is a thing. The bad news is that it also got delayed until February 14th, 2017. So, hey, now you have another Valentine's Day present, you cute gaming couples out there can buy each other. Sniper Elite 4, you can add that to your Valentine's Day massacre list. Um, Mafia 3 had an official E3 trailer, and it looks great. Uh, still on track for October 7th this year, but just so you know, Mafia 3 had a presence in the gameplay trailer they showed looked, it looked serviceable. It looked really, really good. Um, Injustice 2 was announced by Ed Boon uh, for 2017. Ed Boon himself said the game will have new characters and a new gear system uh, with costumes that give additional abilities to characters and more. Um, didn't go into too much detail about it. Or maybe I missed a couple little tidbits that were revealed about Injustice 2, but that's as much as I saw to gather information on it. So that's going to be a thing later uh, later on next year. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport. you think this would be included in the PlayStation conference, but it wasn't. Uh, this is only has only been Sony's flagship racing title since, what, 1998 when the first game came out? 97, somewhere around there. So... Yeah, it was weird not to see Polyphony Digital not in Sony's uh, conference proper, so whatever. But Gran Turismo Sport is still coming. Um, had a great looking trailer, stunning graphics, uh, social media aspects to connect with friends and share car designs. There's going to be championship races. It's going to be a new era of pho pho photography uh, where you can manipulate screenshots you take in the game. That looked really cool. That is on track for November 15th, so not much more waiting we have to do for the new Gran Turismo game, which is always good to see. Uh, Sony's Andrew House confirmed that PS4 Neo is real, uh, and it's being developed uh, despite an official announcement in their E3 conference akin to Microsoft announcing Scorpio and theirs. Um, so the PS4 is also getting a new console. But Sony's being very hush-hush about it, even more so than Microsoft is. Uh, so we know that 
both of those consoles are getting upgraded. We know that Nintendo is making a whole new console next year, so we basically have new hardware coming next year already. Um, even though the PS4 and Xbox One have barely been out four years, I just think it's weird, but whatever. Um, yeah, uh, it will feature support for 4K resolution and VR. Uh, it will complement the existing PS4, whatever that means. Uh, and of course, all games and accessories will work on it, because if they didn't, people would get royally fucking pissed off. Um, that's basically all the news that came out about a PS4 upgrade. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Call of Cthulhu has an E3 trailer. Uh, a new game developed by Cyanide Studios. It's being developed for all modern platforms. Uh, that looks interesting. And speaking of horror games, I somehow completely left this out on my list, but I'm going to mention it here since it popped into my head. Uh, Friday the 13th, the game. Um, I recently caught gameplay footage of that earlier today, um, and it showed uh, a player playing Jason Voorhees in third person, and you get to just terrorize uh, um, teenagers at camp, and you get to grab them, and you get to do whatever gruesome murder you want to them. And it's basically what the infamous game on the NES should have been back then, but it didn't have the... Uh, we didn't have the graphical powers back then to make a game like this, but this is looks like the ultimate Friday the 13th game. So it got kickstarted. It seems to be coming along well, so I can't wait for that to come out and see what the final version is of that. Almost done here. Uh, Lego Dimensions. Bigger characters, bigger stories, bigger battles. Uh, looks to be a mashup of multiple universes that comes out this fall. Um, there was members of Batman and DC Comics and Lord of the Rings in there, and it looks like just a, a greatest hits version of the Lego games, I guess you can say. Uh, Destiny Rise of Iron expansion, this was also leaked early. Comes out September 20th, adds two new maps, changes the starting area, increases the level cap, and more. That's about as much information as I can get out of it, because if I don't care about the Division, I sure as fuck don't care about Destiny at all. But you're getting an expansion for that. Deus Ex Go was announced uh, in the vein of Tomb Raider Go like a, a mobile-type game uh, coming this summer for phones and tablets, so look for that soon. Uh, Ukulele, the kickstarted banjo successor, now has an official release date. Um, it's going to come out quarter one of 2017. So that got pushed back to 2017, but that's definitely coming out next year. And from what I'm seeing, it looks like it's coming along well. Um, it was also shown in the Indie Games trailer on the Microsoft conference as well, I forgot to mention, but it looks, it looks great. It looks like it's supposed to. It uh, will come out on PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, and PC. Uh, Gravity Rush 2 is a thing, and that will be a PS4 exclusive. Uh, gameplay looks great. Uh, no release date shown in the trailer, but what they did show was good. Uh, Civilization 6 is going to be a thing. Uh, two key new concepts for Civ 6. Unstacking cities to offer more flexibility to strategy and trade routes will now be dictated by a merchant. Um, it will be dictated by merchants and traders, excuse me, towards the start of the round. And the UI is also vastly improved as well as the in-game art. And that comes out October uh, 21st, so you can see that for yourself. Uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 is coming out in, take a wild guess, 2017. Uh, which is basically the only Konami announcement in this entire conference, which is really, you know, you know we all expected that. Um, I'm surprised Pro Evolution Soccer is still even being made, but whatever. I mean, it's not a pachinko machine, Konami. Like, what are you thinking? Abzu, A-B-Z-U, the underwater exploration game, had a new trailer that comes out August 2nd of this year on PS4. I don't know if this game is already released on PC or not, um, but I definitely remember it being mentioned. Uh, I think it was there last year. It was most likely there the year before. Oh, excuse me. Um, but from what they showed, it looks great. So hopefully that game does well when it comes out. Uh, Verdun, 1914 to 1918 is a World War I shooter coming to consoles on August 30th. So we already have people jumping on the World War I train and they're gonna wear that the fuck out before it uh, actually does anything 
you know, act before it actually gets interesting or whatever. So that's the thing. Uh, Neo, N I O H, uh, the new character action game by Team Ninja, that was shown. Uh, a beta demo is coming to August this year to PS4. Uh, I think there was an alpha that was already released. Kind of looked like the new spiritual successor to something like Ninja Gaiden or something like that. Looked kind of neat. Uh, trailer for Headlander, Double Fine's new humorous side-scrolling action adventure game. Um, yeah, this is something you'd expect to see from Tim Schafer and Double Fine. Um, looks great. There's, there's not much I can say about it. Um, Psychonauts and the Rumbus of Ruin, speaking of Tim Schafer, uh, was shown via a trailer showing off VR support for it. It will have on the PS4. So I don't know if it's just going to be on PSVR to play Psychonauts in first person. I don't, don't know why you would. That sounds really weird. Uh, but whatever. Attack on Titan E3 trailer. Uh, shows off all the characters in the game. Comes out August 30th on all modern platforms as well as PS3. And I later found out with Attack on Titan, it's going to use the official Attack on Titan license. Uh, taking characters and such from the show. Omega Force is actually making this, so it's kind of going to maybe have like a Dynasty Warriors vibe to it as well. I'm not quite sure, but that'll be interesting to see. A trailer for Nier Automata, that was teased last year. Now we have a more concrete release date, but it's early 2017 for you Nier fans out there. Sorry, Liam. You're going to have to wait a little bit. Um, Batman, a Telltale game series, is apparently going to be a thing. Because when I think Batman, I think point-and-click adventure games. Apparently Telltale does. Um, anyway, point-and-click adventure that promises to offer a fresh interpretation of the universe. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if they're going to tap into a time period with Batman that was very unpopular up to now. I have no idea. But Batman's going to be a Telltale game. Uh, Agents of Mayhem is a new open-world game set in the Saints Row universe. Looks to be a third-person shooter where you can switch between multiple characters at a time. That comes out uh, next year for modern platforms. I don't know if this kind of had a MOBA vibe to it at all, but it looks kind of fun for the brief time I saw it, so we'll see what happens with that. So if you're a Saints Row fan, keep your eye on that. Uh, Alienware was at E3. They actually had a booth there or whatever. And they showed off a new mid-range tower uh, PC named Aurora. Uh, designed for VR, new chassis that is their smallest ever that supports dual GPUs, micro ATX motherboard, i3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, and a GTX 950 for $800 and the case. And all the parts inside of the case are easily upgradable, um, which is probably Alienware's best price to parts ratio I think I've seen yet, so, you know, that, that's a decent price, I guess. Um, the processor's kind of weak, uh, 8 gigs of RAM ain't a lot, I I'd throw at least like 16 in there just to give that an extra little overhead. Um, and i3 processor is old. There's, Intel makes i3, i5, and i7 processors. i5 is kind of the middle of the road, and it's usually what the best bang for the buck is. If you want a good processor for gaming, you get an i5. So i3 is kind of, it's kind of shortchanging people a little bit. So, but what do you expect from Alienware, right? Uh, speaking of Alienware, they also showed off the Alpha R2, which has a console-like form factor that starts out with the cheapest configuration of 600 and a new notebook with an OLED screen that costs $1,300. Whoa. No thank you, you can keep it. <laughs> um, Razer also jumped on the gimmicky hardware bandwagon this year at E3 with the Glove One, a new VR hardware that, proves ha that provides haptic feedback. So I guess they have this glove and there's going to be sensors in this glove where you can actually feel things more than you would without the glove. Like, you feel like feedback if you're reaching out in the environment and touching something. At least that's the that's the um, vibe I'm getting from it. So whatever, we'll see how it works if it actually comes out. Uh, Nintendo announced a new RPG for the 3DS out of nowhere called Ever Oasis, uh, third-person action RPG dungeon crawler. No release date. Kind of looked interesting, but like I said before, Nintendo stole the show with Zelda. I mean, they didn't really even need to bring anything else. 
Um, a couple more things. Uh, Paper Mario Color Splash also made a, well, splash. Uh, coming to the Wii U on October 7th, so Paper Mario fans, look out for that. Rocket League is getting a content update uh, titled Neo Tokyo, uh, a content pack inspired by Blade Runner in the 80s neon era color look. Uh, comes out June 20th, so that's already out, so that kind of adds a new aesthetic to Rocket League since a ton of people still play that. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Game World is seven times bigger than the first game that comes out this winter, so if you're a Dragon Ball fan, Kamehameha, uh, get your Kamehameha's on this winter for the Xenoverse sequel. Uh, a few more things I jotted down. Uh, Farming Simulator 17 later this year. I mean, come on. I mean, might as well just shut down the Game of the Year awards for the, for Farming Simulator 17, am I right? Like, what kind of uh, competition does that game have? Um, last thing I have here, Indigo Prophecy Remaster is being released on the PSN store for $15 on July 18th as part of the PS2 Classics line. Um, so it's going to be a remaster of the game that used to be, I guess, the PS2 version rather than like an overhaul revamp version. Um, so. Oh, oh my god. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, all you Indigo Prophecy fans and Fahrenheit fans out there, I'll let it rip, let those wallets rip on July 18th. That's when that comes out. That's all I got, guys. Um, I'm sure I missed a few small things here and there when it came to the C3, but like I said, no huge surprises. Um, looking forward to Battlefield, looking forward to Titanfall, uh, Fee, that, that Fae, that EA Originals game, I'm going to keep one eye on that. Uh, all I want from Bethesda is a new Quake, but I don't think I'm going to get that for another year or two, so that's fine. I can still play Doom and enjoy that. Um, Microsoft's conference was just perplexing because every interesting game they showed is going to be on PC as well. So I don't know what they're, like, how much effort Phil Spencer and the team at Xbox are going to put in hammering down the wall between Xbox and PC, but that remains to be seen. Uh, Ubisoft showed For Honor. That's all I cared about last year, really. That's all I care about this year, really. Uh, Sony... I'm um, glad to see Last Guardian is actually coming out. I can't wait to see that and see if that game lives up to the hype when that comes out in October. Um, really a bunch of other stuff Sony showed was basically smoke and mirrors, though. I mean, they had a good pace throughout their conference, but nothing really had a hard release date unless it was The Last Guardian or unless it was going to be released in 2017. Uh, Nintendo showed Zelda. That's all they fucking needed to show. Um, the PC gaming conference actually had PC games in it, which is a good improvement. Hopefully we can try and improve on that a little bit more, guys, next year, if you're going to do it next year at all. Um, and that's about it, man. Uh, <laughs> that's E3 2016. I don't have much more to talk about. I've been talking for probably at least two, two and a half hours now. I'll probably split this up into at least three videos, but that's my E3 coverage. Uh, thank you for watching. Sorry if I rambled. Sorry if I seem to rush through this a little bit, but my voice is getting sore. I have to get up for work in about five or six hours because I'm working a swing shift right now, and it's killing me slowly on the inside, but that's okay. We still got a videos out. We still got it done. That's cool. Um, I posted a quick update video on the haps that are going on on my channel here. Uh, long and the short of it is, I still want to make mantra videos. I've just been vi very busy, as usual, um, and I kind of lost some motivation over the past couple of years to do the mantra videos, but now I have a rekindled interest in doing it. So expect those on the horizon sometime. I can't give an exact date, I'm sorry, but they will come, I promise. Um, I have a few new ideas for videos. Um, those are those will come eventually. Like it, it all comes down to having time to do it. And I'm actually sacrificing sleep right now to get these E3 videos done. But I'm glad they're just done. If you watch this far, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, there's going to be more videos. Um, 
if you like what you see here, come back. I hope you guys do. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Have a great weekend. Have a great 4th of, Ju uh, of July. Enjoy the fireworks. Eat a cheeseburger or a hot dog for me if that's your thing. Um, and yeah, just try not to blow your hand off with a bottle rocket, I guess. And have fun and relax and eat some good food. Enjoy the holiday. And I will see you guys later on. And here's to E3 2017. Seeing what comes out then. I will see you guys later. More Duke out.